that it takes a lot of effort and time to refine a laboratory procedure or protocols, so it's tempting to conceal it from others. So why should anyone else profit from your hard work? It is really important to start with the same laboratory procedures and it's really important to know the protocols, the rules, and guidelines when you are doing your science investigatory project. Are you one of those students who are conducting a science investigatory project? Well, this lesson vlog is for you. It's really important that we know how to conduct an experiment accurately. Hello, future researchers! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tim May. Siyempre, ang kasama mo sa iyong science journey. For today's lesson vlog, so ito ang start ng ating quarter 3, week 1, lesson 1. And this is all about the BSL and the protocols. Yes, week one is for experimenting and we're going to discuss about the protocols and the BSL level. So, kung isa ka sa mga estudyante na nagkakandak ng SIP at lumalaban kayo sa mga Intel ISEF, so para sa inyo ang video na to. Okay, so this lesson vlog is based on the Intel ISEF rules and guidelines 2019. So, ilalagay ko yung link sa description box yung link kung paano nyo makukuha yung uh, file so about the Intel or the International Science and Engineering Fair International Rules and Guidelines 2019. So, dito naka-base kung ano ba yung mga dapat nyo i-consider when you are conducting a science investigatory project. Okay, in this lesson vlog, pag-aaralin natin yung tungkol sa protocols and of course, the BSL or the Biosafety Level. So, ano ba yung mga kailangan yung i-consider when you are conducting your science investigatory project? There are different rules, guidelines, and protocols that we should follow for us to be qualified to compete for any research festival or any research competition. Especially dito nga sa Intel ISF na tinatawag, which is the International Science and Engineering Fair. Okay. Without having the knowledge about these rules, protocols, and guidelines, baka masayang lang yung ginagawa yung science investigatory project kung hindi nyo susundin ang mga protocols na to. Okay, so aside from this, we're going to discuss first the purpose of these rules. What are the purpose of these rules? There are seven purposes of why these rules are being conducted. Okay, number one, it protects the rights and welfare of the student researcher. Yes, napakahalaga nito para lalo na sa inyong mga estudyante na nagkakandak ng research experiment. Number two, protect the rights and welfare of human participants. Especially kung yung ginagawa yung science investigatory project ay kinakailangan na mag-involve kayo ng mga tao. Number three, to protect the health and welfare of the vertebrate animal subject. Yes, tungkol naman ito sa mga hayop na maaari nyo rin involve sa inyong science investigatory project. Number four, protect and promote good stewardship of the environment. Okay? Number five, ensure adherence to federal regulations. And number six, to ensure the use of safe laboratory practices. And last purpose of this rule is to determine the eligibility for competition for the Intel ISEF. What is a protocol? When you hear the word protocol, what comes into your mind? Siyempre, pag narinig natin yung protocol, maari ito yung rules na nga, yung regulations na kailangan nating sundin or kailangan nating i-follow kapag tayo ay nagkakandak ng mga science investigatory project, lalo na kahit mga simpleng experiment lang. What is a protocol? When we say protocol, this is a system of rules that explain the correct conduct and procedures to be followed in formal situations. It is a plan for a scientific experiment or for medical treatment. And when we say protocol, this is also a document that describes the details of a treaty or formal agreement between countries. 
Okay, aside from this, there are different rules and regulations uh, for human participant, for vertebrate animals, for potentially hazardous biological agent, and for hazardous chemicals, activities, and devices. So, ilalagay ko yung link dito sa description box ng mga topic tungkol dito sa mga rules and regulations dun sa mga nabanggit ko. At pwede nyo siyang panoorin at para mas malaman nyo at mas maintindihan kung ano ba yung mga rules na kailangan sundin when it comes to this uh, category. Okay, pero sa video na to, sabi ko nga sa inyo, we're going to discuss about the biosafety level. Quarter 3, Week 1, Module 1. We're going to discuss about experimenting the protocols and the BSL. What is biological safety levels? Biosafety levels or the BSL are used to identify the protective measures needed in the laboratory setting to protect workers, the environment, and the public. The levels are defined in biosafety in biomedical laboratories or the BMBL. Biosafety level designations in the BMBL outline specific practices and safety and facility requirements. There are many ways to combine equipment, practices, and laboratory design features to achieve appropriate biosafety and biocontainment. These are determined through biological risk assessments specifically conducted for each experimental protocol. Now, let us talk about the classification of biological agents risk groups. Biological agents, plant, or animal are classified according to biosafety level risk groups. These classifications presume ordinary circumstances in the research laboratory or growth of agents in small volumes for diagnostic and experimental purposes. There are four biosafety levels which is classified as basic classes of laboratory risk from low to high. We have the BSL-1, BSL-2, BSL-3, and BSL-4. The BSL-1 is a risk group contains biological agents that pose low risk to personnel and the environment. These agents are highly unlikely to cause disease in healthy laboratory workers, animals, or even plants. The agents require biosafety level containment or biosafety level 1 containment. For example, the agrobacterium tumefaciens. These are the example of biosafety level 1. Or ito yung mga bacteria na pwedeng pag-aralan which is considered to be in under the biosafety level 1 group. Another one is the micrococcus leotus. And another one is the Neurospora crasa. And another one is the Bacillus subtilis. But this is known also as the hay bacillus or grass bacillus. It is a gram positive, catalase positive bacterium found in soil and the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants and humans. Bacillus subtilis is a part of group 1 and is strongly linked to B. lichiniformis, which is often found on the cuticle of insects, and to the group of animal pathogens formed by B. thuringiensis, B. cereus, and B. anthracis. BSL-1 labs are used to study infectious agents or toxins not known to consistently cause disease in healthy adults. They follow basic safety procedures called standard microbiological practices and require no special equipment or design features. Standard 
Engineering controls in BSL-1 laboratories include easily clean surfaces that are able to withstand the basic chemicals used in the laboratory. The Biosafety Level 1 or the BSL-1 laboratories, they are suitable for work involving agents of no known or of minimal potential hazard to laboratory personnel and the environment. However, working with organisms like Bacillus subtilis, Negleria grobiri, infectious canine hepatitis virus, and non-pathogenic E. coli species may be known to cause disease in immunocompromised individuals. Now, let us now proceed with BSL-2 or the Biosafety Level 2 Risk Group which contains biological agents that pose moderate risk to personnel and the environment. If exposure occurs in laboratory situation, the risk is spread is limited and it rarely would cause infection that would lead to serious disease. Effective treatment and preventive measures are available in the event that an infection occurs. The agents require biosafety level 2 containment and examples of BSL-2 organisms are Mycobacterium. Mycobacteria are the causative organisms for diseases such as tuberculosis or TB, leprosy, burly ulcer, and pulmonary non-tuberculosis mycobacterial disease to name the most important ones. In 2015, globally almost 10 million people developed TB and almost half a million patients suffered from its multi-drug resistant form. In 2016, a total of 9,287 new TB cases were reported in the United States. This is a mycobacterium. Another example is Streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus humania are lancet-shaped, gram-positive, facultative anaerobic bacteria with 100 known serotypes. Most S. humania serotypes can cause disease, but only a minority of serotypes produce the majority of pneumococcal infections. Pneumococci are common inhabitants of the respiratory tract. The bacteria may be isolated from the nasopharynx of 5 to 90% of healthy persons depending on the populations and setting. 5 to 10% of adults with their children are carriers. 20 to 60% of school-aged children may be carriers and 50 to 60% of service personnel on military installations may be carriers too. Another example is Salmonella cholerasis, which causes blood poisoning in some hogs but is latent in others, which act as carriers. Apparently, healthy pets, examples are dogs, cats, and turtles and other reptiles can, through close contact, transmit salmonellosis to humans. These are the examples of this bacteria. In addition, concerns over salmonella contaminated pork products as human health hazard add to processing and monitoring costs of pork products and may impact overall product demand. All salmonella are considered pathogenic for humans, but salmonella cholerasis is really isolated from pork products. BSL-2 laboratories are used to study moderate risk infectious agents or toxins that pose a risk if accidentally inhaled, swallowed, or exposed to the skin. Design requirements for BSL-2 laboratories include hand washing sinks, I washing stations in case of accidents and doors that close automatically and lock. BSL2 labs must also have access to equipment 
that the contaminate laboratory waste including an incinerator, an autoclave, and or another method depending on the biological risk assessment. Now, let us proceed with BSL-3 or BSL-3 Biosafety Level 3 Risk Group which contains biological agents that usually cause serious disease to human, animal, or plant or that can result in serious economic consequences. Projects in the BSL-3 group are prohibited. BS BSL-3 laboratories are used to study infectious agents and toxins that may be transmitted through the air and cause potentially little infection through inhalation exposure. Researchers perform all experiments in biosafety cabinets that use carefully controlled airflow or sealed enclosures to prevent infection. BSL-3 laboratories are designed to be easily decontaminated. These laboratories must use controlled or directional airflow to ensure that air flows from non-laboratory areas such as the hallway into laboratory areas as an additional safety measure. Other engineered safety features include the use of two self-closing or interlock doors, sealed windows and wall surfaces, and filtered ventilation systems. BSL-3 labs must also have access to equipment that can decontaminate laboratory waste, including an incinerator, an autoclave, and or another method depending on the biological risk assessment. Now, let's proceed to BSL-4, the Biosafety Level 4. BSL-4 risk group contains biological agents that usually produce very serious disease to human, animal, or plant that is often untreatable. Projects in the BSL-4 group are prohibited. BSL-4 laboratories are used to study infectious agents or toxins that pose a high risk of aerosol transmitted laboratory infections and life-threatening disease for which no vaccine or therapy is available. The laboratories incorporate all BSL-3 features and occupy safe, isolated zones within a larger building or may be housed in separate, dedicated building. Access to VSL-4 laboratories is carefully controlled and requires significant training. The laboratories incorporate to all BSL-3 features and occupy safe, isolated zone within a larger building or may be housed in separate, dedicated building. There are two types of BSL-4 laboratories. The first one is the cabinet laboratory and the second one is the suit laboratory. For the cabinet laboratory, all work with infectious agents or toxins is done in a class 3 biosafety cabinet with very carefully designed procedures to contain any potential contamination. In addition, the laboratory space is designed to also prevent contamination of other spaces. These are the example of la cabinet laboratory. And the other one is the suit laboratory. Laboratory personnel are required to wear full body air supplied suits, which are most sophisticated type of personal protective equipment. All personnel shower before exiting the laboratory and go through a series of procedures designed to fully decontaminate them before leaving. The engineering controls required are different for BSL-4 cabinet and suit laboratories. For either type, they are extensive and supplemented by carefully designed procedures and practices. Now, let's talk about the levels of biological containment. There are four levels of biological containment, the biosafety level 1, 2, 3, and 4, 
Each level has guidelines for laboratory facilities, safety equipment, and laboratory practices and techniques. For BSL-1 containment, BSL-1 containment is normally found in water testing laboratories in high schools and in colleges teaching introductory microbiology classes. Work is done on an open bench or in an appropriate biosafety hood. Standard microbiological practices are used when working in the laboratory. The contamination can be achieved by treating with chemical disinfectants or by steam autoclaving. Lab coats and gloves are also required in Biosafety Level 1. The, work, the laboratory work is supervised by an individual with general training in microbiology or related science. And the second one is the BSL-2 containment, which is designed to maximize safety when working with agents of moderate risk to humans and environment. Access to the laboratory is restricted. Biological Safety Cabinets Class 2 Type A BSC must be available also. An autoclave should be readily available for decontaminating waste materials. Lab coats and gloves are required. Eye protection and face shields must also be worn as needed. And the laboratory work must be supervised by a scientist who understands the risks associated with working with the agents involved. And number three, the BSL-3 containment. BSL-3 containment is required for infectious agents that may cause serious or potentially lethal diseases as a result of exposure by inhalation. Projects in the BSL-3 group are prohibited. And last, we have the BSL-4 containment, which is required for dangerous and exotic agents that pose high risk of life-threatening disease. Projects in the BSL-4 group are prohibited. This is the end of our lesson vlog in Quarter 3, Week 1, Module 1 in Grade 7, Research 1. So I hope you learned something from this vlog. At sana mas naintindihan nyo at nalaman nyo kung ano ba yung mga kailangan nating i-consider when we are conducting a science investigatory project. In our next lesson vlog for Quarter 3, Week 2 in Research 1, we're going to discuss about still about experimenting but this time is all about the risk assessment and disposal when we are conducting a science investigatory project so this time sa next lesson vlog natin i-discuss naman natin yung tungkol sa risk assessment kapag nagko-conduct kayo ng science investigatory project about uh, human participants uh, okay and SIP that involves vertebrate animals ano ba yung mga risk assessment for that Ano naman yung mga risk assessment when it comes to potentially hazardous biological agents? At ano rin yung mga risk assessment when it comes to hazardous chemicals, activities, and devices? So, samahan niyo ulit ako at ating pag-aralan kung ano ba yung mga risk assessment na to. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. I hope I see you again next lesson vlog. So, see you on my next vlog. This is me again, Teacher Tin May. So, of course, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Research One. Bye! Subscribe ka muna!